Oh, thanks, Zachary. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Ah, there we go. There we go. Clayton's here. And I think it's going to be popping in. Javier's here. Yeah, there went so low. God. <laughs> ah. Is Hi. there more people or is it just me? No, no, there's people coming. I made a, oh, a terrible error. I put the wrong Zoom link in there. So I'm, people are just slowly coming in. But yeah, don't, uh, okay. don't feel awkward, though. It's okay. I do <laughs> this. It's, if you don't want to show your face, it's totally fine. This is a... It nah, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll have to... I'll go... I'm going to set this up. I wish I had a web... Oh, we just... There we go. Got a big 36-inch monitor, but Ooh. I don't have a webcam. No, that's all right. No good. It's all good. It's all good. All good. All right. I'm just going to one more minute here. I got still people pinging me. Uh, I think I'm going to switch possibly next time to like a webinar. So it's like the same link every single time. So. Yeah, that's you. I was like, oh. And I am recording this. So if you have to leave early, I get it. We're all busy, especially with the holidays. Uh, I'll be fine. I'll just be going in and out a few times. But other than that, I should be good to go. Okay, no worries. All right. All right. I'm going to get another minute here. This is like the third or fourth meeting I've had to go to today. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been busy, Always too. Always something. Always. <laughs> phone call after phone call, missed calls. I've yeah. got interviews that I'm trying to get hold of, and they don't show up for the interview. So it's like, uh, but okay. All right. I sent out an email to update it. I sent out text messages. So hopefully that comes through. Um, I'll see if I can just kind of watch watch my uh, SM, my text messages, see if anybody else clings through here. All right, cool. All right, welcome guys. Uh, thanks for hopping on. Uh, this is our uh, annual, and I'll probably do this again in January for folks that are kind of too busy at the moment. And uh, this is kind of our annual check-in to see how we are doing and what we can do for 2024. I'm going to go into some uh, details about what to look for, um, definitely setting up budgets. I've got a spreadsheet, I've got checklists, I got everything, all that kind of stuff is ready for you guys when you're ready. Um, again, this is being recorded. It is gonna go on my YouTube channel. Everything that I'm providing here with, with checklists and spreadsheets, all of that will be included. You're gonna get all of this. Um, the next is, uh, where's my bit? So true. Yeah, so just strategies, that these are just strategies that you'll be able to hear year round. Um, first off, we're going to have set some goals. How many leads do you need? What kind of budget do you need to have? We'll have some um, big picture stuff. So marketing channels you should be tapping into and maximizing right now. Um, website optimization, how to optimize your website for 2024. We'll talk about some important marketing trends. And I, I don't really have it as a slide right now because it's changing all much, but I will get into some AI discussions. Feel free to ask me questions about that too. Um, we'll talk about developing your own custom action plan, um, some KPIs that you might need, a budget, and where what marketing channels you need to be looking at. And then, of course, we'll for sure have opened it up to Q&A. So um, first, just do me a favor, turn off the cell phones, Facebook chat. You know, if you're a moving company and just really serious about making some changes in 2024, especially with the world the way it is now, Um It'd be great. We got an election year coming up. We've got high interest rates. Not a lot of people are moving. And I'm, I'm having a lot of conversations with moving companies. They're struggling. Um, obviously, we're in that season right now. It's December, January. And they're they're looking at 2024 as a what do I need to do? So um, I just want to give you a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've been doing this it's for over 20 years. And uh, I started my career off as a Defense Department logistician. So I spent 10 years um, working in uh, warehousing, transportation. Um, one of my very first jobs was taking stuff out of the Gulf War and into containers and shipping them back to the U.S. I had to build a whole database for that. And this is, don't ask me when. 
was a while ago. I've worked with um, contractors across the country. So it's not just moving companies that I've worked with. I work with remodelers and plumbers. So I have a pretty broad experience, but I've been working a lot more with moving companies. I kind of have an affinity for the niche. I like it. I like the people. Um, I think you guys are just such hard workers and I just, I just have this affinity and just let you know, I've moved every three years of my life. I've had a civilian move, a private move, a corporate move. I've moved internationally. I've moved across the street, you name it. So I am the person on the other end <laughs> that people talk to. I'm the one that goes through all of this asking, you know, looking for moving, com moving company. So I just want to let you know, I've not been a moving company owner. I'll be upfront about that, but I have been part of that whole logistician. I've been in that world and I know what it takes. Um, I've actually had to go through the process of weighing my stuff to work with a military move. So been there. And one other thing is doing that. There we go. All right. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about nailing your marketing. Um, what do we need to do to double your revenue and improve your profit? I just had a phone call today with a, a moving company outside of in California, struggling really tough. He's got very low uh, uh, project. You know, he, he charges on average five hundred dollars for a move, which I just think that's just way too low for anybody to make a living off of that. And so, you know, what do we do to improve that, make that, get that more, get some more profit out of that? And so, he's got a seven percent conversion rate. It's not very good. So what do we do to increase conversion rates? What do we get more, more um, money coming in the door? So what do we need to do to double the revenue? Um, are we looking at hiring more movers, right? A lot of you guys have 1099s, um, but I've experienced some folks that just do better when they have full-time movers or at least employees. So what's the goal here? Um, are we expanding to new regions? A lot of a lot of y'all just kind of work locally, um, maybe from a specific distance. I'm here in Texas. So when we say I only move within Texas, well, you know, are you going to move to El Paso? That's a three days. <laughs> Texas is a big mm -hmm. state. <laughs> so where are we going to move to? So are you going to expand into distance wise? Are we expanding into different? Are you going to go international now? Are we trying to go more national stuff? So what's the goal for 2023? Now, planning to play, ugh, fail to plan um, and you won't. You can't rely on a single source of income. Referrals are great. I love referrals. I, I do well with referrals, but if you lose a referral, like a realtor is retiring, you know, there goes half your lead. So you need to fail to plan so you won't fail. Does that make sense? I don't know if that came out the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> My government contractors, they change about every two years, the procurement officers. Yeah. yeah. So you just got to know that that's what's going to happen. So you got to plan for that. Um, if you guys yeah. want, um, I'm going to throw this into the, the chat and you guys can go ahead and download this. Here we go. That's the link to the annual workbook. And the workbook looks like this. You can download it, print it. We've got objectives in here. I've got your 2024 plan of what your current snapshot's gonna look like, what your 2024 plan is gonna look like. And then I've got a link straight to this workshop. So when you copy this, make sure you make a copy of this. And again, there's an, I'll send you that link here. And we're gonna go into both of these. These are really great tools to help you figure out what your budget is, what your cost per lead is, where you're going to, um, you know, what's your marketing budget going to look like? How's it going to break down? So we start here with a lead generation, right? So if your goal for 2024 is to make 3 million, right? That's a monthly revenue target of $250,000. Now, anything that's in this green, you can change those numbers. So if your average ticket, you know, is $1,500, you're going to need to have 167 jobs per month in order to get that 3 million. So if we can up your average uh, ticket value to 2000, that's obviously less, that's four daily jobs, 125. So it just, it kind of, it helps you visually see where you need to be. Um, the budget allocations is great. Everyone's always asking me, how much money should I put into marketing? It, it just depends on your willingness of your, um, whether you're conservative, whether you're aggressive with your marketing, 8% is about in the average range, you know, six to 8%. Uh, three to five, you're pretty conservative. So if you've got looking for that 3 million, right? We have a 3 million, 8%, 8 
you're looking at a total annual budget of $240,000. People's eyes go when they see that. So if that's not your cup of tea, lower it down to 5%. And you can see what that breaks down into each of these different um, pools. So online marketing, offline marketing could be billboards, TV, radio ads, um, and then repeat business. How much money you're going to spend per month trying to um, promote to other past customers, family, friends, realty, realtors that you might meet, government contractors. So I, I encourage you to just take a moment and, and see what this does for you. Um, even further on, I've even given you some content ideas just to give you guys, you know, everything from moving, packing and storage. These are just content ideas, but don't go there yet. Don't do that yet. But I just wanted you guys to get access to the planning documents and mm -hmm. what we're going to be going into here. All right, so we do want to set some clear goals. Like I mentioned earlier, we just want to make sure we've, what exactly do you guys want to accomplish in 2024? Um, clear goals, wind at your sales. That's just something that you're going to have to, I just recommend, you're just going to need to do something like this. End of the year, January is the perfect time to do it. And what are your goals for 2024? How many leads are you going to need to get to 2024? If you've got a $5 million budget, I'm sorry, $5 million goal to, to get. So $5 million. So if we're doing the $5 million and monthly target of 416, average value is 2,000. I need 208 jobs. I've got an 18% conversion rate. I don't know what your conversion rate is. Remember I was telling you about the 7% guy? That means he's got to get almost 3,000 leads, <laughs> which is practically impossible. What I'm hearing most people are doing is like 45%. So that's 460. If I can get them on the phone, I'll have a very high probability. Right. Just getting them on the phone. That's the hard thing. That's absolutely it. We're, and I'm breaking off here, but it's totally cool. And so what I'm finding yeah, is people don't living up. Oh, it's fine. No, no, no. It's cool. I'm looking at the fact that I don't like forms anymore. Forms are cool for people mm -hmm. that are at 10 o'clock at night and they're filling out a form. If you don't pick up the phone right then and there and call them immediately, it's it's almost pretty much guaranteed you won't get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing. Um, and you know these forms are 24 seven, and they fill out the forms. But what they're doing is they're going to five different other places. So I just feel like the having that number dialed and picking up somebody picking up the phone that's your best bet. That's your best conversion there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So back to this, the, the snapshot, I'm not going to revisit this too much, but I think this is what you want to make sure you write down somewhere, fill this out, figure out where you want to be, what your average ticket is. Because these are the questions I ask every new person I talk to. What's your average ticket? What's your average conversion? How many movers and drivers? How many trucks do you have? What's your sales? What's your staff like? You know, I, One of my questions is, is it just you answering the phone or do you have a, a sales rep or receptionist answering the phone? If it's just you, that's tough. I'd, I'd hire somebody, get somebody, a 1099 contractor, see if they can, doesn't have to be in the office. It could be remote. Give them a script, give them some tools to figure out an estimate and let, and take those calls that way. Average month. And yeah. then what's your current snapshot? So, and I'll just, I kind of went through this already. So we didn't need to go through that again. Long term. I, I, have, I wear too many hats. That's the thing is I've, um, maybe we can talk later after the, the class. Yeah, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but yeah. <laughs> I, you uh, know, um, Zachary and Rodney and some of the others probably have the same questions. I just don't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I wear too many hats. I answer the phone. I pretty much do everything. Yep. Um, I hear you. I hear you. And, you know, I'm a small business owner too. I've got the same, you know, same thing. So, all right, there's that marketing plan again. Uh, I'm kind of repeating here. So let's talk about your marketing strategy. Strategy Now, now you set some goals. So if you want, you can throw it into the, the chat. I'd love to know how many leads you guys need to get. Have you figured that out yet? I'll give you a minute or so if you want to just kind of take a moment and fill this out if you want. And let me know how many leads do you need to get per month starting in January in order to reach your goal. I'm just curious in the chat, but you guys, what that looks like. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, now, if you've already know what you're going to do, great. So um, now it's time. It's just, you just want to make sure you document this and uh, maybe it's your website. 
I don't know, maybe you realize you don't know uh, if the forms are working uh, or the, where, where are the forms going? Um, you don't know what the data is. The, what I hear a lot too is people don't know where their leads are coming from. Either that or they're buying leads, one or the other. Uh, again, I spoke to somebody earlier this week and he said that his leads, most of his leads he's purchasing, which I get. I don't agree with it. I think it's a lost lead, but that's okay. Uh, but on the flip side, you know, they don't know where they're coming from. They don't know if they're paid ads. They don't, you know, they say paid ads work and they didn't work. I don't know if it worked or not. I don't know how much I spent. I spent a lot of money. I just don't know what happened. So you really need to get real clear. And if your current marketing company is not giving you the accurate data, you need to know these numbers. As the owners of your business, these are numbers you need to know, especially in the marketing side. I am sure you guys got the operations down, right? You know, how much to pay your people, how much your leases are, what your taxes are and stuff. But I, I find it interesting that a lot of you guys don't have the, the numbers when it comes to your marketing, at least not fine-tuned. So just where is it that we need to focus the most? Now, this is kind of this growth model. And there's a lot that goes on here. Your website, reputation management, conversions, right? Maximizing conversions. I'm not talking about the leads that come in. It's that, is it a 7% conversion? Or are we talking 50% conversion can make or break a company? Optimize your results, average cost per leads, your total spend, paid search, database, drive leads. I mean, it's there's a lot that goes into this. And again, you're going to get this sheet. Don't be furiously writing things down right now. Um, there are clear steps whoops, to triple your goals, right? There's, we want to drive leads. So where are those weeds coming from? Organic, paid. Do you have a, a database of people? I know that a lot of you guys probably do some direct marketing. You mail leads to a list that you purchase from people who either just are put their homes on the market. And that's a great tool. That great, I've got a client that does really, really well with letters that he sends out. Uh, to a specific targeted list. We Then we go to the maximized conversions. So we've spent all this money getting them to you. They come to your website and your website isn't working. It's not converting people. They can't find the phone number. The forms aren't working. They get a sense. They're not quite sure who you are. There's a little trust issue going on. Um, people don't like to put their faces on their website. You have to get past that. And we'll talk about that later. But Reputation management. You got to get those reviews in. I know you know this. Drive those reviews to Google reviews as much as you possibly can. There's tools out there. I know Smart Moving does it. They've got a great tool that once you finish, send out that review immediately. It helps. Automation is fantastic for those that like yourself, Clayton, when you just you. Automation is your best friend. Mm -hmm. If you can get things happening without you being around, that's great. But that's that conversion side. And I keep going back. Optimize your results. Now, I've we've gotten the leads. They've made the call. Now we need to find out about optimizing. Should you be spending 5% minimum of your marketing to push your message out and get awareness? Um, are you going to want to stay where you are? Do you rely solely on referrals? That's great. But if you want to grow, then you have to invest. So that's where we get into optimizing results. Now we go back and we see what, what drove the leads. What was our best conversion tool? And we just start, and it's just a massive iteration over and over again. We've got clients, you know, we start off in three months and we, we round again for the next three months, right? So seasonal too, you might have, um, you know, a January, February, March campaign, and then you've got your high season campaign in the summer and then the fall. And then, so all of this has to be adjusted and tweaked and updated. Um, then track your ROI. That's where these numbers need to go. You've got to know where these numbers are coming from because you're just throwing money out the window. I'm hearing it left and right. And it just hurts my heart when we see this. So omnipresence is the yep. key here. <laughs> it does. It really does. When I hear people say, I hired a company to do SEO and I can see on their website that zilch was done. I can see it. Nothing I was paid done. 50 grand in one year for SEO uh, or search engine optimization. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that was probably wasn't even really that much money compared to what, you know, most people spend. It just depends on how aggressive it, they were. You know, we can talk about it and see what they've done. But I mean, I can see it. The, the website's gotten built. Yeah. And on the very bottom, the, the social media icons goes to their webs, not the company, not the moving mm-hmm. company, their website. I was like, oh, man, that it truly like yeah. my heart just hurt for him. Omnipresence is the key. So don't just depend on your website. It is not the end all be all. It is the the foundation for sure. Nowadays, uh, you need to um, think about all areas between the top of the search engines, social media, where, you know, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Google business profile, um, your map, your Google, yeah, your Google business profile. So this is one of our company's blue ox. And it's just all about omnipresence, being everywhere. We've got tools that, so let's say you've got a paid ad, they come to your site, I now drop a cookie. If I have an address associated with that cookie, I can send off a postcard immediately. So it's bam, 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 bam. So it's not, so SEO, you spent time on SEO, money on SEO, they come to your site. But remember that seven, there's that seven point touch. You got to touch people seven times before they make a decision. So they did a paid ad, then they see your ad, they go to your social media, they get a postcard from you, they go back to your website, they get an email newsletter from you, and maybe another decision maker, a phone call. Seven points. So omnipresence is the key here. You got to be everywhere all the time. It's a world we live in mm-hmm. now. I'm I'm not super happy about it, but it is, it is what it is. I did uh, Mozzie, I think it was. There was a, a program called Mozzie to where... Enter y'all your information puts it pretty much everywhere online. Yeah. Or my SEO guy did that. I'm not sure if that's if you've heard of that, but Mozzie. You basically enter, I guess your address, your name. Uh-huh. Yeah, Mozzie, I think. M-O-Z-I, something. Hmm. I know there's Moz. You on all social media. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That may be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Moz. No, it's Moz. Yep. And they're, they're like every other tool. There's SEMrush, there's um, Hrefs, Moz, there's uh, Web CEO. There's all these many, many tools. And there's one that, and what you're talking about is getting mm-hmm. your name properly listed in all these directories. And that's, that's purely SEO yeah. purposes. That's not omnipresence. That's just for SEO so that Google mm-hmm. sees your address, your name, your phone number is exactly the same, which you have to do. Um, yeah. Just kind of back to this conversion idea. There's so many things that you guys can be touching on, but you can't do them all. And that's where we have to go back and strategize on this. What's the best touch points to do? We're even looking at Bing. We've done really well with Google ads, but I'm thinking Bing is the next level because Google ads is becoming so AI generated. It's becoming difficult for us to help um, uh, make changes because they keep wanting to uh, do it for us and we can't customize it, which is not a good thing from an advertiser perspective. So Bing is kind of coming up there. Um, it reaches a market that's a little bit more money. Tell you the truth. People on Bing have money. I don't know. That's what the survey say, but you know, uh, retargeting for sure is another big one. So like I said, if they come to your site and we've got a zip code, I can have the zip codes for you. If they visit one, two, three websites, I can get an address associated with that user. I can send them a zip code. I'm sorry, send them a postcard. So it's not a postcard to every single person that visits your site. It's just within a range of zip codes. So it's just constantly hitting people. Paid online directories, repeat referrals, the pay per lead, Google local service ads. I know moving leads is out there. I'm not a real fan of it, but it's there. It is what it is. You know, I can't say, you know, they drive leads. I just don't like how they do it. Um, definitely video. If you haven't done video, you got to get on board with that. It's a, it's a trust factor guys. Um, with AI, the way it is, I can generate a blog and a, and a photo for using mid journey that it, it, it's really good. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to deny it. Um, it does really well. So my, my thing is that what's coming is, um, it's, it's not scary. I'm not scared with it, but it is going to change the landscape and people are, there's going to be a bit of a trust issue. I don't know if it's real. I've seen websites with super 
auto, um, AI generated images and the guy's got three legs and four arms and nobody looked at that and they put it on their website. So just be careful you're using it. Don't copy paste, take a moment, look at it before you post it. But video is what's going to help move you above your competition. I guarantee it. And I'm not talking about polished video with a bokeh, with a Sony camera like I have and a bokeh behind me and all that, the special camera. I'm just talking about using your phone and doing video right there on the spot, showing packing, showing them loading, showing the piano move, whatever it is, and posting it on social media. You've got to be, you got to be on top of that. Newsletter. I have a, a YouTube channel for that, actually, that Perfect. I started. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry Great. to interrupt, but yeah, they uh, the basically like uh, assembling stuff, packing mm -hmm. stuff, like mm -hmm. just to show the customers what they're what they're going to expect on Wednesday. Yep. Day. yep. Perfect. It's just it's just the one I'm seeing coming down the pipeline. Trust is a big issue. How, how do I know it's real? Mm -hmm. Video helps with that. Now let's talk about your website really quick. I'm just going to speed through this. Your website is your hub. Here's just an example summit that we're doing here. Um, when we took it over, uh, it was, no, it was, it is what it is. It's a lot of times you guys start off with just like one, your own website you built, or maybe a GoDaddy site or something. And that's great. I don't, I don't recommend the first couple of years you hire somebody to build you this fabulous website. Just get something out there, get your phone number up front. I've got people say that they love their site. It does wonders for them. So I'm not touching it. If it's doing it thing, let it do its thing. But there's just some elements about it that we want to make sure that are that are in there. Um, this is just an example. It's not the most beautiful site in the world, but it's got all the right elements. We got a phone number. We got a quick quote. We've got exactly where they're located, right? This is DeKalb, right? DeKalb, Illinois. So I know what where they're headed. So just be real clear. Now, why is conversion so important when it comes to your website? So if we've got a hundred leads a month and a 5% conversion and no follow-up, then, you know, we've got an average 12,500, but if we're going to, if we have a website and it's actually converting and we're, we've got some automation involved, we got 25 book jobs, we've got 62,000. So there's, there's just a real big issue when it comes to conversion with your website and obviously anything else, but how do we optimize for that conversion? How do we make sure that, I don't have, I have, I go from 5% to 25% conversion. That's to me, that's one of the biggest draws. I'd rather get you more conversions, even though I might only get you a hundred leads that doesn't change. If I can help with that conversion, that's great. Cause that doesn't change. I, you know, sending mm -hmm. leads sometimes is a money thing. I just pour more money into paid ads. I pour more money into postcards. But if I can get to the help you get to the point where we go from a 10% conversion to a 25% conversion, that sticks, that's a sticky thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to ask you real quick, what, um, anything you guys want to share? I know Clayton's really good. I appreciate it, Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Sorry, I kind of interrupt sometimes. <laughs> no, it's good. It's all good. Rodney, Zachary, Javier, anybody? Roman, anything you guys want to share? I'd love to hear it. Really would. Just going to give you guys a break if you want. I need to have a sip of water here. If not, I'll keep going. Yeah, somebody talk. Yeah. Uh, you guys in the moving industry too? I'm in San Diego. So oh, yeah? You okay. you anybody to unload your stuff. Nice. In San Diego, California, I got you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Rodney. Oh, Rodney. okay. <laughs> me, I did unmute it. <laughs> Where are you, Rodney? Where are you, Rodney? I've been in Ventura, California. Okay. Cool. All right. Ah, so you're um. Let's see. That's uh. That's up in. That's north of LA, right? Uh, yeah. I'm just uh. You can say 50 minutes hour out of LA. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's uh that's uh where um I know where that's like not close. It's in between Malibu and Santa Barbara, I think. Uh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, okay. get to Santa Barbara in about yeah. Well, I'm minutes. in San Diego, so if you got any jobs coming down this way, we'll be happy to unload for you. We just charge oh, okay. your hourly rate, no fuel <laughs> fee, and I'll, I'll do the same to you. Romans okay. in San Diego too. Not a oh, problem. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Zachary, where are you? Zachary's like, I'm on my own. Right, and no. I've been in business since uh, 2012. So 
you know we we know what we're doing we got some yeah yeah you know, no, I, I hear so you. So we'll there. take care of the take care of anything you send our way. Okay, like I say, same here. All for working together. Yeah, you know you I got like to it. nowadays. Again, crazy. The California Air Resource Board. That's about to drive me crazy. I had to sell two of my trucks already because they didn't yeah. have diesel emissions fluid. I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, they're not playing. I just seen an article. They find some big company one hundred nineteen thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. I had to say, I saw two trucks that were paid off, brand new engines, brand new transmissions, sold both of them for 22000 and then had to buy one uh, 2018 model for 52000 So, wow. got screwed real bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was tattooed, all right. That's not Oof. good. Oof, and there goes your cost. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, have a choice, but luckily I've got some good government jobs coming up they pretty much guarantee like you know one of them's 150 grand a year so that's pretty much uh that's you know guaranteed and then anything else we make uh you know the residential jobs you know those are i really prefer government and commercial like we're kind of do a niche on uh laboratory mode oh, because really? a lot of people don't want to yeah a lot of people don't want to do that i've, I've realized because yeah. it's kind of you know fragile um, yeah, that's like that. But I do them, and you know, one we did yesterday, they paid me twenty six hundred for one day just to move. Um, you know, it was like six big uh, things you put your arms in, and it's like gloves on the inside to where you're dealing. Oh like yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Medical, yeah, biomedical type stuff. No, I got you. All right, well, I'm gonna you keep moving on him. here. All yeah, right. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, that's you good. You guys are working. It's all good. It's all good. All right. So I'm going to go through this real quick. I've got uh, an internet marketing checklist. Again, I'm going to throw this into um, the, the chat here. Go ahead. Feel free to download that as well. Let me okay. make sure that's working. Um, 12 critical elements to enhance your conversion, right? Back on track with the conversion here. So um, Speak to your target avatar. I know I, you know, don't be like Revlon where they say everybody with skin is my market, target market. That's not, that's not your case. Find out what your fear. We do, I like to do avatars on your best clients. I realize that you might have apartment senior moves, you know, pack only kind of stuff, but always have in mind that perfect avatar, that perfect customer. Is it a 55 year old professional woman with three kids? husband she makes all you know is it her is it somebody maybe younger that's go, that is mobile and, and apartments and they got a bunch of friends i don't know who that is but try and speak to that person have photos of that person on your website what are their fears ask them why they chose you is always a really good question in the beginning of a conversation it really helps with marketing because we'll ask we'll ask those questions during our strategy calls, our monthly calls, where we'll be like, okay, why did this person choose you? Why did they sign the contract? And it's not always because of money. Uh, so be real. I really want to make sure you guys use as many authentic images as possible of your team on your homepage and throughout the website. Video and multimedia elements engage different modalities because some people, they all have different ways of getting their information. Some people like to read, some people prefer video. So just have those options on there, but I'm going to reiterate, use authentic images, use real video, have a website welcome video. The, the, the welcome video might be the more polished one. You might hire a videographer for that. But after that, really just use Canva is a free tool. Uh, you know, you can get the pro version, but Canva has got a great way of, of helping you stitch pieces of video together, have one for every service, your residential, your apartment, your office, your condo, your whatever it is, have videos for each one of those. Why should someone contact you versus the competition? What makes you better than anybody else? Don't always play by the price game. Don't be the cheapest person in the in line there. Don't, it doesn't, it's just a fast way to go out of business. Leverage social proof. If you can, man, get those online reviews. Like I said, Smart Moving's got a really great tool. A couple of our clients, we had a cool tool called Gather Up, but we found out that um, Smart Moving was just better. So we just canceled the Gather Up and we just use Smart Moving now. So whatever is going to thing mm -hmm. to get those reviews. Now I'll add on to this. 
if you can get a review while they're in their house or their new house and upload a photo themselves, the better. That helps with Google business profile because every image that they're uploading has, has a meta code in it and a location tagged. So that gets read by Google and our bots. So a review with a photo is like the gold standard. So if you can get them. Is, that there, is, it, is it there a new thing with, uh, with Google right now? The, the neighborhood, um, what's it called? It's like, um, uh, the, the snack. No, it's not the snack pack. I thought that's what my SEO. Oh, the called. map, the map pack. Yeah. So you're basically, you have to do something specific. I think sign up. Well, there, there's Google local ads, local service ads. Is that what you're talking uh -huh. about? Uh, well, I thought that he said you had to sign up for it and you had to get approved. It's basically you get the green check mark, I think that's is what Go it is. That's Google guaranteed, Google local service. Yeah, that's, 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 yep. that's it. That's it. That's it. That's a paid service. Okay. So that's a, Do you that's recommend a, that or no? I recommend it. Yeah. You just, and okay. there's not a lot of, there, what, this the setup process on this. You got to have, Everything ready, all your photos and a video, all your reviews need to be in place. You got to have insurance. You got to get all set up because after that, there's yeah. not much more a marketer can do. Um, it just, it's yeah. there. The only thing. Well, I've got all on, of it. Yeah. But I've been it relies in business you guys, for 11 man. years. Yeah. It's just, you got to be in there every day. You have to be in there every single day to determine if it's a, a real legit lead or not. Because not mm -hmm. everybody, some people are looking for jobs. That's not a lead. You got to dispute it. So you don't spend all of your budget in one yeah. day. You just have to be in there every day. Um, it can work. You just, you got to work it. Um, get mm. the basics in order. Get your phone number in the right hand corner. Don't hide that. Don't put a call now with a button without your phone number. I'm finding a lot of people don't even touch it. They just, they have their phone and they dial it. So they want to see that phone or right away. I'm going to call right then and there. Um, yeah. Ensure there's a web form for customers to fill out. I mean, some people, that's just what they like. I just find it difficult to follow up with them. Um, do add some credibility and authority scores. So if you've got, if you're BBB rated and Angie's list, well, not Angie's now, but make sure you put some of that credit. If you belong to a chamber, what's going on here? <laughs> I don't like Angie's <laughs> list. I think that was a uh, home, home advisor. Yeah. Home advisor too is another, yeah, 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 right. They but if you belong to a chamber, something. the movers associations, I think, I'm not sure which one's in California. There's a few of them. There's national ones, but you know, if you belong to any of those, put those on your website, clear calls to action. Try not to have too many calls to action. I see websites where there's like 15 call now, learn more, fill this out, download, um, get our checklist. And there's, it's too much. Just just a phone number. Honestly, mm -hmm. the phone number, you can put the estimate in there, but I'm just, I just, I don't know. I'm seeing people don't want, you just can't get a hold of them. Um, use special offer coupons, right? So if you are, if you work with veterans, maybe there's a veterans discount, a senior discount, um, share those on social media, have a monthly offer, a monthly coupon that you can do and, and, you know, change that out on the homepage every month. Uh, make sure it's mobile optimized so that when I go to your site on a phone, I want that phone number visible at all times. I just touch it and dial. I don't want to look for it, find it, fill it out and answer that phone guys, answer the phone. It's fine. Voicemail. I get it. It's a Saturday at six o'clock. I understand, but I personally feel like you should get an answering service at that point, even if you're not going to talk to anybody. They want to talk to somebody right then and there. They want to get an answer. I, I can't tell you how many times I've called moving companies and I don't get a phone call until Tuesday morning. And I called on a Sunday, Tuesday morning. You've lost the business. Yeah. So if you're going to spend money on this stuff, you've got to be aware that, you know, hiring service, get a high school person. I don't know, whatever it is. Live chat. Ah, hmm. I need to do that. I had a telephone operator for a while, but. I just felt like that the guy was watching. He was getting on Facebook too much. You know, it was kind mm -hmm. of a, um, he wasn't answering because the phone didn't ring as much as it should have rang at the time. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of free time. So he yeah. would use his free time searching Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, you might want to give the option to book online if you've got a calendar system, uh, especially from an estimate. Uh, if you want to have a discussion with somebody, they fill out a form, they fill that out right, you can have a calendar set up. Mm -hmm. um, and site speed does matter. So you want to make sure you're checking it. Try to use SMS. Um, as I've noticed myself, even with you guys, um, it's important now. It's just the world we live in. Uh, so mm -hmm. make sure you've got some tool managing your SMS and some marketing automation. So. Yeah. What are we doing here? There we go. Um, oh, let me go back. So this is another one of our clients, Blue Ox. So they actually have packing supplies that you can buy. And they usually just kind of share that with their current clients. But we've got call and request an estimate. They have their own video at the top. But even this, if I were to go back and do this, I'd probably get rid of these. I'd probably push these down a little further and not have so many calls to action. Um, we did this a couple of years ago, so it's probably time to kind of revamp this a little bit, but just very, there's no missing what I want them to do, period. Um, here's another one. We did not build this site. This is not mine. I just like that. It's just, I love the guys in the front. I just love that. They're just, they're happy. They're all, their t-shirts are there. They got the truck behind them. Right. I, I think it just, it gives off a value that, um, the real, real, real people, um, personalize the business, um, add team photos, add a picture of the owner, the CEO, crew, staff. And, you know, they're obviously they're having a softball game here. So that's a it's a I think it's just part of community as well as a trust factor, expertise, post some videos, um, YouTube, embed them. Don't put them right on your website. Try to like, you know, Clayton was saying with his YouTube channel, put it on YouTube and then put it onto um, your website. Uh, definitely showcase your reviews, embed them as, as you can. So every review you get, get gets automatically updated and make sure you leverage live chat. Again, I'm, I'm not sure live chat's working just yet. There is some AI tools out there that I saw last week. I, I was on a webinar watching, um, a new tool that I don't know about you guys. I don't like bots on chat. It It's the most annoying thing, but what I'm seeing with AI is it, you train it to answer the questions like a real person would. Things like, are you available to come to my house to, to give me an estimate? Yeah, when's a good time for you? Next cool. week. Great, when next week is a good day? Is that Tuesday or Wednesday? And it talks to you like that. I can see that. That I can see is a true chat. Now, unless you want to have 24 hour ch on chat and you somebody is there answering questions, I, most often I see there's a chat and, it, and nobody's really doing anything about it. So it sits there. So if you're going to have chat, chat's got to be answered. Um, is it mobile friendly? Right. So we're going to be able to use use it, right? I'm not going to go through all the stats of how many people, we know how many people use mobile phones. That list I talked about, that checklist, that's that's this whole checklist. I'm not going to read all through this, but that checklist I gave you earlier is there. Is your op website optimized for search? Right now, we've got 71% of clicks on the top of the search pages. 71%, 67 of the 71% go to the first five listings. So if you're on, if you're number 10, ain't going to do my whole lot. So you either get into that Google local, you pay for it, you do the Google guaranteed, or you're not on the page at all. It just, if you're on page two, it's just, nothing's going to happen. And there really is no more page two. You just scroll. You know you're on page two and you get past that second round of ads. But most of the time, 67% of the 71 go to this top five. So that Google business profile is really, really important. And people say, people don't click on the ads. They click on the ads. <laughs> they do. I'm just talking about organic right now. This is just SEO at this point. So all of these guys are getting most of the, the clicks. It does matter. You just, you can't rely on paid ads alone. Paid ads is a turn off and turn on. That's it. If you turn it off, ads stop. SEO is branded. It can continue working. If you get it right, you get the content right, stuff you can share over and over again, it'll help. Um, they're looking for expertise. So you got to build that authority right now. Do you have your main keywords? And again, I'm not going to read through all this stuff. It's in that checklist. But these are the things you want to make sure you're doing. Keywords are a big deal. Um, local movers, movers near me. Those are really competitive phrases. 
the likelihood, if you haven't done it yet, it's going to take a long time to get up there. Long time, a lot of work, a lot of money. So maybe it's local piano movers. Maybe it's long distance senior moves. The longer keywords, a little easier. You don't get as much traffic, but if you can get several of them, they all kind of add up. They're a little easier to show up for. And again, we've got page, uh, you do need a page for each service. It's changing a little bit. Um, I'm seeing things like having a, a location page. We still do that, but we optimize as much as possible. We get uh, geotagged images on there and then we share on Google business profile. We use it on Facebook. So we drive as much traffic to them, but we need to make sure you have your on-page, your Google business profile, claim and optimize your maps, add your Yext or similar citation manager that Clayton was talking about earlier, sure. making sure your citations are up. Ongoing content, push out your new blogs. If you're going to have a blog, don't just post the blog, syndicate it, distribute it, send it in an email, throw it on your social media. Having a blog is kind of like a baseball in the middle of the field. <laughs> they don't always come. So if you have a blog, it's got to get out there. Nobody's just going to go read your blog. You got to share it. So signals that they're looking for is expertise, authority, and trust. That's the new that's what Google wants to see. And that's what I'm talking about. Video, content, pic, actual, actual real pic, embed, embedding. embedding. And does your does it come up for search on site optimization? I'm getting close here to an hour. So I'm going to kind of go through some of these a little bit. Um, pretty much everything that I've said here. Um, do I see success with individual landing pages? Yes, I do. Um, not only landing pages, but actual blog posts. You'd be surprised. Sometimes the blog posts are number three and number four on the top pages. So it's interesting to, to see that. We and, and because we distribute it, we throw it out in a press release, we get it on in all the different social medias. And we, we the whole goal is to drive traffic back to the website. And so when we look at the analytics, I'll it'll be it'll tell me, it'll be like, hey, this blog. Not only that, we'll even put it as a paid ad. We'll have like the ultimate moving checklist, right? And that'll be on a paid ad as a secondary link in there. So we'll see that driving traffic too. But um, make sure you've got unique content. I know AI is out there. I've seen it. I've had clients with marketing people. They go to AI. They have AI write a blog. And it is nothing to do with the location, the business itself, what they do. It's just nonsense. So I'm not saying don't use chat GPT and AI. I'm not saying don't use it. Just be really careful how you use it. Get the right prompts to do it and edit it before it gets posted. Uh, focus on your page speeds. And that's just repeating what I've been saying earlier. Uh, make sure you've got one keyword for every landing page. So if it's piano movers, make sure the whole thing is about piano movers. The title's a piano mover. You've got pictures of people moving pianos. Um, optimize the whole landing page and then for sure the whole site. You want about a 1500 words per of content per page. Just one of our dashboards. So when I talk about SEL leads are the lowest cost per lead, but the highest close rate because it's something it's organic. So people kind of trust it a little bit more. Um, it takes a while to get to the top, but it, I think it's worth it. Some real life examples. So that's a title tag at the top. So these are Seattle movers. That's an H1 tag, Greater Seattle Area Local Residential Movers. We've got an H2 tag, some content. We've got in more individual content to take me to different pages. So um, when you look at that, there's is your site properly optimized? What services don't we offer, right? We've got service pages, Houston Home, Storage, Packing, Office. We've even extended this now. There's It's a longer list for here as well. There's a page for every service. I sometimes see people just say local moving services and they list every single page, everything with service on one page. I don't recommend that. I have a page for every service. Um, here's another example, service areas. This is one of my remodeling clients. Aurora Home Remodels, Batavia, DeKalb, Geneva, Sycamore. So every, we've even going into the communities now. So, but have a page for everyone, every location. Now, guess what? I got a keyword list for you guys. So if you want my keyword list, do I have it? Ooh, hold on. I'll get it to you guys. Copy link address. This is the keywords. Download that. Those are just use these as ways of either building pages for your paid ads. Um, but it's not just these, there's more in there. Let me see if it'll open up for me. Yeah. 
So these are commonly searched. I've even given you average monthly search. And this is uh, in, an individual metropolitan city. So it's not all over the US. So it's it's pretty relevant. But these are some of the top words. You've got moving rentals, mover costs, movers quote, piano movers near me, packing supplies. You know, the top ones obviously are movers near me. And like I said earlier, if that's what you're trying to go for, it's going to take a while. A while meaning a year, if not longer, and more money. <laughs> it just it just takes a while. Negative keywords are just as important. We've started building these into um, some of our paid ads. So if you are in California and you're doing paid ads, make sure that uh, you only do local moves. Make sure you have negatives in your paid ads as well as your some of your SEO. Like don't use the word cheap in anywhere of your website content. Don't use affordable. Don't use the word free. That gets picked up. Don't if you don't do sheds, don't talk about sheds. Um, if you don't do pianos, don't talk about pianos. So um, and then obviously the HR stuff here. So, all right. Off page C SEO, again, get those citations out there, Google business profile listing and get those backlinks. Backlinks are authoritative sites. So if you've got an Angie list, I keep saying Angie's list because I keep going back to that, but Angie, if you can get a good link back. Chambers of Commerce are good links back to your site. Um, other blog posts linking back to your site. Hello, I'm some. Sorry to interrupt, um, okay. uh, but I meant uh, you were talking about the the uh, negative keywords. But uh, what about uh, toxic backlinks? That's one thing I've dealt with in the past. Yeah, we do that about every quarter. We just round up the toxic backlinks and we go back to Google Search Console and we just disavow them. There's a way to do that. Okay. Yeah, you can okay. always help that. Yeah, I, I had like I had a lot of them at one point. Yeah. Yeah. If you're really active building a backlink strategy, it can, there's sometimes there's just no way to stop it. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you've got a really good authority on your website, people are going to want to hijack that. And so those toxic links are kind of part of yeah. that. Process. So as I've been, I've had my website for about nine years so far, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then make sure you're, you're sync, you're sending out your content as many places building up those links, pages yeah. are built, optimized, more than 70% of the battle and any SEO is building those links. And whoever has the most quality links wins. A Wikipedia mm -hmm. link to your site is again, gold standard. I've got one client in the oil and gas industry, he got a Wikipedia link and I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but from a mm -hmm. movement perspective, you know, it's more about finding people that are talking about moves. So maybe realtors might have a website or an interior designers might have a website or staging people mm -hmm. and getting links back from those sites are, are great. Um, do Google Maps matter? You bet. They're probably probably top tier if you can if you can get on the top. This is an ad. So I if I do any paid ads, I try and get on that ad. 45% mm -hmm. of all those clicks, they all go, they go straight to that phone number. Yeah. Do Google Maps matter. And yeah. like I said, once I get them on the phone, I pretty much got them booked 100%. Yep. yep. Especially in phone. person. In person, I think I've got like a 99% success rate. Yep. Like yep. if I go out and do an in person quote, I'm going to book the job 100%. When it goes both ways, you spent the time to go out to see them. They're not going to go now start finding because that, that takes time away mm -hmm. from them to have these appointments with two or three other movers. So if you could take, took that time, I like the quote, I like you. Yeah, I see that. Mm hmm. But yeah, but just Google phone Maps. calls is kind of tricky. It's like maybe like you were saying, 30, 40 percent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I believe so. I'm I'm we're still tracking it. I'm still kind of watching it a little bit more, but I do see more phone calls. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you ask them later, they're just they have a hard tough time getting hold of people. Now, paid marketing. Um, back to what we we're talking about, Google Guarantee. That's Google um, local service ads, GLSAs. And again, I had a whole webinar on that last year. If you want to go to my YouTube channel, it's there. I talk about in length what that looks like. I do believe in a paid ad campaign. It in sync with a, an SEO campaign. I think the two of them work well together. They um, you do get found, and it gives you a little bit more ability to add. The thing about paid ads, and I'll just keep moving along here. Um, there's just options to that. I don't, I'm not real keen on the pay per leads. I don't like them. Google local service ads, I think is a little bit different um, for sure, because there is a guaranteed thing in there, but it goes back to the fact that if you're paying for leads, you are one of 10 other people that got the same lead. And I've experienced that myself. I don't want to go through, again, I don't want to go through all this, the details here that's back in that spreadsheet. 
So, but why do they fail? Um, when I go in and I look at some of these paid ad campaigns, I can see that there's only one ad group for all the services. That's a bad, bad move. The second thing I see is they're listening to Google and the Google reps tell them what to do. That's also a really, really bad move. They're in, they're in it to make money. They're going to give you whatever it is to get the most money for them. So don't, don't follow those recommendations. Don't follow the Google reps. Unless you're having a problem, reach out. But other than that, don't take their advice. Don't use specific text ads and landing pages. They, they, what failing is they send people to the homepage and not to a specific landing page. So if you have a, again, back to the piano, if you have a piano move campaign ad, send them to the piano moving page. If you've got residential home paid ads, send them to the residential home page where you talk all about the beauty of the work that you do, the services, the benefits, the guarantees, the what happens afterward. All of that needs to be on that homepage, but the front and center phone number, boom, right there. Don't make me find it. No strong calls to action. If the other thing that people are missing and I, they don't take advantage of the add-ons. So when we see at the very bottom, let's see back in here, they don't add these add-ons here. Free moving quote, home moving. That's one sponsored ad. And you can look here in two men, they don't do that. So all this real estate, you want to be able to take advantage of that. They typically do this little, that's actually not a sponsored one here. So let me go further down. Who else is doing sponsored? Oh, here. Well, they're doing it here, but just a little bit, but I do like it. We try and get it so that we take up as much of the real estate as possible. So they're not taking advantage of all this. So um, that's what I'm seeing and what people fail to do. Yeah, they call out ascensions. They forget images. They forget adding video. So when you go into a paid ad, make sure that you're filling everything out. All those call out extensions, all the photos that you can think of, put it all in there. Tap into the Google local service ads. Pick a budget that you're comfortable with but be in there every single day. Again, there's my checklist. I'm not going to go through all that. Your foundation is your search engines, which is your SEO, your map pack, your pay-per-click. Next is your social media, your online directories, and your paid lead services. So are you active on social media? This is the next question for 2024. What, are you, what different are you going to do on social media? I know I'm going to do more video, more quick video, and I'm not going to be really tied so much into making sure everything's perfect. I'm going to record it and I'm going to post it and get it done because <laughs> I spent too much time trying to make it look good and it's not working. How active are you on there? I think, you know, I say daily, I say every day, post something, be in there every day. Cause it's, if you'll notice, um, you'll notice that when you go to your feed, pretty much every second or third is a sponsored ad says a lot what Google, what Facebook is trying to do. They want you to do boosted posts. So I say every day post something and post video, post reels, post shorts, and then boost, boost a post every now and then and do some Facebook ads. That's really going to reel them all in. Cause I've seen people with one guy, one guy had, he said he had a marketing company. They were doing, he couldn't list me everything, but he said they were doing social media. I went to his page, he had zero likes zero. I could see they posted about once a week, but I'm like, what was the point? Nobody saw it. <laughs> Nobody saw it. So, you know, if you're going to do it, do it often enough and share it guys. You are the owners of the company. Share your own posts on your own personal profiles, get your employees to do it. Get anybody, you know, to share your posts, like your posts, comment on your posts. It's not cheating. It's not <laughs> do that. Get everybody. Everybody needs to be in there and involved. So are you active? So I'm not going to go into the stats here, but on average, user has 135 friends and they'll check in 69 times per day. So that's the other thing, your blogs. When you post a blog, don't do it one time. Do it multiple times. One post can be shared repeatedly over the next year. And don't do it at nine o'clock every day because you're missing the 12 o'clock, the five o'clock, the six o'clock and the nine o'clock people. So Really, really work on getting that repeat business and those referrals on there. And again, there's your access. Now, are you leveraging? A, I stuck that in there because I want to make sure if you're not sure what to say, that GPT is great. Give it a, a prompt. Say, hey, I'm a mover in LA. Uh, give me five examples of, uh, 
uh, residential moving social posts and give it a little bit more parameters, it'll come up with some really good ideas for you. So there's no reason not to leverage that for, for yourself. And um, uh, yeah, so leveraging email marketing is my next level for 2024. I think people don't use this enough. Smart moving and some of these other tools are great when after the fact, after you've sold them, you've given them the estimate through the, through the tool, you've got those tools in there, but I'm talking about beforehand. So I've got a tool in, in place that I track the calls, I track the emails, I track the forms. It's all loaded in with Google ads. I can see the Facebook ads. I can see everything in my, in my tool. It's called movingup.pro. And it, I tie it into smart moving so we don't have to do double entry. Somebody fills out a form, it automatically gets sent to smart moving. And, um, but I think what people lack that extra step when somebody requests information or an estimate, you know, they might be looking at others. So why not send them one or two follow-up emails? Hey, here's our great checklist. Um, here's our accolades, here's our reviews, and maybe one day, maybe the second day, and then the third day. I'm not talking about slamming people with a bunch of emails, but that then a monthly email. So somebody's thinking about moving, maybe something happened, they're not moving for six months now, but let's just send out a monthly top of mind email that might be repeating the, the, the blog post you sent. And this is just some information in here too. Do you send out a monthly newsletter? Are you leveraging online reviews? Direct mail is another one for 2024. This is an example. You can send out a postcard automatically targeted by your top zip codes. I'm working on, on I found a company. I'm talking to them now about doing more direct mails. Um, what I like to do is I put QR codes on there. So if they use the QR code, I can track it. I know they came from that postcard. Um, oh. We have a phone number for that piece of piece of info. That data, that postcard has its own phone number. I know they came. So I get ROI on every piece of content that gets sent out. Um, and we that that everything gets tracked with the QR codes. Not every time, sometimes they take it and they just dial the number. <laughs> so the number is still tracked, but if they go to the website outside of it, I can't, it's hard to track that, but I try and do as much tracking as I possibly can. I do like that um, if you hit them multiple times with a letter, a postcard, a website visit, a Facebook ad, it, I just think that's where I think that's where we need to start doing yard signs. I don't see this enough. I don't know. Do you guys use yard signs? I know the truck is one big yard sign, but I'm wondering, I'm, I'm saying like a QR code on the sign, um, something, either that before or after you've left, Hey, we were here. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I've Maybe, but, people, but I throw stuff like that away. Usually like, I don't know how other yeah. people are, but any type of mail too, like postcards and stuff. I just leave them. I just throw them in the trash. <laughs> right, right. I don't know right. if other people are like that or not. Yeah. Um, is lead flow the problem? That's the other question. Is is it is not the problem that you can't get enough leads? Is it are you converting? So fifty to sixty percent of inbound leads leave unconverted. So sometimes you're getting enough leads. Sometimes it just mm -hmm. takes too long to get back in touch with them. If so, you've lost the lead. So sometimes the leads are sitting in an email somewhere. I do not, please tell me when people fill out that form, it doesn't go to your email. I can't tell you how many times people will go, either they can't get into their email and their email becomes the lifeblood. I don't believe in that. I believe you should have a system in place that all these emails are, are curated in another piece of software and you're not waiting on your email. You should have a piece of software that's managing all these people as they come through and you need to be moving them through the opportunities. It's a new lead. Like HubSpot or Salesforce? Like HubSpot. Yes, exactly. I have my tool called Moving Up. It's a tool that does the same thing. It's just not as expensive. And I've geared it for moving companies. Mm -hmm. so I've got landing pages for it. I've got all the opportunities set up for it. I've got the email marketing that's all set up for moving companies specifically. But I, it, again, it hurts my heart when people tell me, oh, I just, it goes into my email. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how we manage. Yeah, so for one, go, so I'll, no. I'll check that out, whatever you're talking about. Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll have another webinar. I'll show you the whole shebang with the whole CRM, but you've got to follow up with these people within 15 minutes. There's been a lot of research on this and 15 minutes is that sweet spot. Um, so that's what I worry about these Saturday night, Sunday afternoon calls, not picking up the phone or not at least calling right back. Uh, you know, it's just, it is 2% of all sales are made during the first point of contact. 
That means if you don't follow up, even with a simple email, you're missing out on almost 98% of your sales. So um, God bless that sucker just goes right through, doesn't it? Yeah. So leveraging marketing automation. So when you have a web form, an email goes back and an instant, another email is sent as well, confirming maybe an appointment, a phone call. I actually have it in place that if they call, I can actually send out an immediate social text back right back to them that says, Hey, it looks like we missed your call. Um, we'll be in touch you with you shortly and let us know if now's not a good time, let us know a good time through SMS automatically. So they call, Phone call didn't go through. Nobody answered. Text can go right to them. <laughs> Automate the way you follow up five times. Able to engage via two-way text mes messaging. You want to make sure you're doing that. Um, again, simple math. 5% conversion versus 25% conversion. We at 12,500. Are you guys going to do 62,500? So how are we going to how are we going to get the, that revenue? Up? And you have the tools to, to track it. I think that's the thing that I see missing. We're not tracking the right thing. Google Analytics has changed. Do you have events? Do you have conversions set up? Do you know where they came from? What's your best landing pages? What's your best source of uh, referral traffic? Do you know these things? And that's our growth model. Drive leads, maximize conversion, optimize the results. Reiterate, iterate, reiterate, iterate. It's just a constant battle of con what do we need to make a change? That's my checklist. You guys have it. And um, I would love to know, I'm just going to stop right now. What are your top three things that you guys are going to do in 2024? Either you can type it in the chat if you want. Clayton, I'm sure we'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> Grow. Grow. To get, I had three trucks at one point. Uh, now I, I had to sell two of them. So now I got one, but I want to get back to three trucks, having jobs every day. Okay. So about six jobs a day would be perfect. Okay. What about you, Rodney? I am definitely going to take your advice and uh, revise my website. Good. Too busy. I know. I know. I hear you. Or I'm going to have you do it. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I need your help. Not me. As it should be. I don't do my own bookkeeping for a reason. So, you know. Right. Right. I don't move well, on I my own. <laughs> so we need to uh, discuss um, probably me and you and then uh, Rodney and you need to discuss, um, you know, uh, individual services. Because, right. uh, yeah, I don't think I can do a lot of this myself. No. Yeah. yeah. I, you yeah. know, I don't move myself. I did it one time myself. It was a disaster. I promise I would never do that again. So, you know. I've heard, th I've heard that at least a hundred thousand times. <laughs> yeah. At least. I've been good though. I mean, I've been in business for 11 years. So obviously yeah. I did something right. Made it yeah. through the pandemic. Yes, you but have. It's still, it's not as big as it needs to be. You know, back in 2017, I had uh, two big government contracts. And uh, I haven't had the last government contract I had was 2019 before the pandemic. So it's yeah. been kind of just residential commercial stuff mm -hmm. and I'm getting by, but it's not, you know, as much as I'm breaking my back, I need to be making money for the longevity, the future. You yeah. know? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, not just I, like getting by a, paycheck to paycheck type stuff. Yeah. It's a, the government jobs, I think are like a nice cushion. It's a nice thing to have. But to really grow, yeah, that's yeah. you got to get beyond that. But yeah. you need a variety, like you were saying. Yeah. You need a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, I'm hearing too, you were talking about increasing your average project. Okay. You know, I was talking to the guy that does the $500. I'm like, you know what? If you want to increase it, first, I'll just freaking increase it. The $500 is insane. So I'm like, you need to get to a mm -hmm. thousand minimum. I said, but you know, if you're at 1500, you're trying to get to 200. I've talked to a few guys and they're adding on things like junk removal. So yes, we'll move you, but in addition, we'll, we'll throw oh, out yeah. things that you don't need. So, cause right now they're calling the junk haul guys. Yep. You, yep. Yes, they are. And uh, yes. uh, uh, cleaning too. Cleaning if is the other hire, one. Like Absolutely. I, did, I hired a couple of, uh, yeah. a couple of uh, women to do uh, the cleaning. Yeah. So like on a move out clean, yep. we move everything out and they come in right after and clean it. Yep. We got one client that's just getting into that. 
He's like, why am I doing this? It's just, you hire a, a couple people to come in and clean and you know, yeah, it's not, you know, he, he knows a lot how to of people, people just don't understand how much uh, moving and that type of service actually cost. You know, mm -hmm. they think that, Oh, they're going to get it for two or $300 whenever, you know, just the supplies and the gas in the mm -hmm. truck mm -hmm. is going to cost that. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Sure you know, does. A full yeah. blown, um, you know, cause I got 26 foot trucks with lift gates. Wow. So yeah. it did not 10 miles a gallon, you know, at least at, at, at most. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, but also you're doing them a huge service. That's two less people. They got to call. If you can just get it mm -hmm. done for them, that that's super value. And I think by offering that and just being the go-to for all things moving, you know, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Right. And you, especially if you're getting with these realtors and doing the stage moving, right. We, that's you know, mm -hmm. they've a few gigs like that where they're just the go-to for, for any of the new homes. And they're having, we've been system. doing that, uh, that, that a lot as well. Uh, staging. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of real estate agents, but there's another one that people should look into. Um, I don't know. I think his name was uh, Anthony, right? Uh, the other guy on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do um, basically you charge the insurance company. So it's basically like, um, uh, what's it called? If, if the place gets flooded or there's a fire, they usually call. Um, there's one company. It's like a green and orange logo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know you're talking famous. about. Yeah, they're um, pretty famous. But you can do that, too. And it's called uh, uh, you basically pack it. It's like uh, uh, pack outs. So you basically go in and you salvage everything that can be salvaged. And then the insurance company is who pays you. So you charge your bill to the insurance company. Right. Restoration. I think it's uh Surf Pro. Surf Pro. Surf Pro. Oh, yeah. I know Surf Pro. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I used to be part of like yeah, the BNI so group and they were huge in BNI, the Surf Pro guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you could yeah. do the same thing. That that's another uh niche. I've been yep. getting into uh laboratory uh moving. So we've been moving like crazy heavy uh centrifuge to where they do biomedical stuff and we have to wear uh white suits with gas mask and uh, you could just charge more money for stuff like that oh, wow definitely yeah that's good i like that so we got website is one that you guys got to look at one of your action plans what was the other one clayton mm -hmm. you said your website um, you said grow i get the grow part but what specifically yeah um well i need to because for the last two years i haven't paid any money in advertising i pretty much just been running off of uh returning customers and referrals Okay, and it's so good looking enough to, to pay the bills, but right. it's not it's not like I'm making money. Right. So looking at paid ads. Rodney, you got website. What'll be the second one for you? Um I think the number tracking results would probably okay. need to do a little better with tracking the results. Yeah. Where's Google your money analytics, I think you can get on that. If, if you haven't, if your web developer hasn't done that yet, that would be the first thing you want to do is install that. It's easy to do. It's free. Let me know. I can certainly help and just do it for you. It's fine. Um, but well, that'll yeah, that's be, something that'll you want to start tracking. Part of your, that'll be part of what you do. Yes, we do all that. We set it, everything set up and we give you access. You own the account. We don't, we don't set right. things up where we own everything. And if you leave, you're screwed. Really? Oh, I just, got you. Yeah. So <laughs> What's basically the, uh, every the pay-per-click on uh, Google ads right now, because I've never really had much luck with Google ads. It was always like 12 or $15 a click. Yeah, that's, that's about right. But the deal yeah. is that if you get leads from it, it's worth the 12 to $15 a click. That's yeah, so we're doing this. pretty well. Yeah, but, if you're yeah, converting. converting, converting. Yeah. yeah. But that's my point. When I and see you do these uh, things, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff yes. too. Yeah. 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 Especially Facebook. Yep. Okay. I had to pull somebody and then yell. Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think I got about a hundred reviews. I think I'm four and a half oh. to five stars. Nice. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, you don't do Angie's List or Home Advisor. I think they're the same company now, actually. Yeah, I think they they merged. Yep. Now I. But other than that, yeah. You you think Google Ads is a good way to go? Mm -hmm. I think doing both. You got to. I just believe you need to do both. It's all part of the ecosystem. Bing Ads too. We're looking at uh, mm -hmm. looking at we are doing Bing ads now, so um, it's you know we don't always have to follow in line with the Google ecosphere here. Let's let's span out into things like Bing. Bing's now got um, Bart, which is a, their own AI. So people have been kind of 
using that particular search engine recently. And it is a bit cheaper too. We're seeing, I've, I've not seen it, but low, there's been lower cost per click. What I've seen with what's well, about the total per month that you think you would, um, for your services, for my services for, well, we, yes. we start at about 1400 a month. That's where we start at. And that's like a website okay. and SEO and probably beginner pay-per-click. What if we already got website? We just need the SEO, the toxic backlinks erased. Maybe I got to see your ads. website. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can do that too, for sure. Cause I, I just had mine website. designed like, two years ago. So it's not yeah. that bad. It's kind of and set up for uh, mobile phones. It, yeah. And it's, I'd have to see it because I'm at a, mm -hmm. I'm at a disadvantage if the website's not working, then I'm like, well, crap, what am I going to do now? So, okay. but it depends. Sometimes we just take over the site and we just kind of optimize it. I've done that with a few mm -hmm. clients. The site's fine. We just need to kind of, you know, make a few. And I've got, and um, who's the hosting. It's not GoDaddy. It's uh blue. Oh, no, it's not blue. What's it called? Um, blue host. There's Bluehost. Uh, we do not recommend GoDaddy. Never, ever. Yeah, ever. It's, it's, it's not GoDaddy. It's another one. It's not Blue Angel, Blue. Blue. There's a million uh, of them out there. There's SiteGround. Yeah, I think that's, it's There's a, Google. oh no, or, or, Oracle Ocean. No, Ocean something. Uh, something Ocean. Blue Ocean. Probably. Maybe, it's, <laughs> maybe it's Blue Ocean. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so Roman, what, a, Ocean, so Roman, I think I got Roman. Roman said he wants to dominate the market. Nice. That's a good one, Roman. I like that. All right. Um, so what we've covered, we got clear goals for the year. Make sure you utilize that spreadsheet I gave you guys. Map out your plan. So set a budget. You know, what what's your budget going to be? How much are you going to be spending? And get that set up for 2024. Are you going to be conservative 5%? Are you going to be aggressive with 8%? You know, what's your monthly budget? What's your goal? Look at that. Make sure you set that up because you can't make any of these decisions unless you know where this money is going. Um, and let's just kind of make sure we set up our success. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll absolutely be following up with everybody on this call. So we can schedule some time if you want. That's my schedule. If you'd like, happy to have a conversation. Christmas is coming. We're closed Christmas and the week after Christmas. <laughs> so, but next week I'm around happy to pick up the phone mm -hmm. and have a conversation. So if you, um, and what I do is um, that first five, it's a five, 10 minute call. I just want to ask, ask kind of the same questions I've been doing here. And, but the strategy calls more of a 45 minute, just you. And we go through, I look at your site. I give you a report. I go through your keyword list. I give you, where are you ranking? I want to know what's happening. I mean, I do the whole gamut. I mean, it's a whole full on report. So um, happy to do that for you. Uh, there's another tool that I have called the, uh, photo shoot list. I find that you guys forget to take the right photos. So I've got a full checklist on how to, what photos you need. And it just gives you some guidance on that. Um, cause I, usually it's for my own selfish purposes. I just, I don't get enough good photos. So I, here, <laughs> here's the list. So, um, that's about it guys. So we're just going to go. And is it possible to send me this information? I'm not downloading mm -hmm. it. It's fine. Just I'm going to get, email. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Give me all of it. And then uh, we will talk. Yeah. Sounds, sounds great guys. All right, guys. I hope that's yep. been helpful. I know it was long. Yes. But that's helpful. the annual thank one. You. No, thank you so much. You're no, so thank welcome you. guys. Thank Thanks for 2024 is going to be a good year. It is. A big, year. I big year. You guys, I wish all you guys a lot of jobs. Yep. A lot of moving furniture up three flights of stairs. And, uh, <laughs> all uh, the fun stuff. Curse all right. you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a but good all one. those are probably expensive, though. So, you know, maybe. <laughs> all right, guys. Yep. Thank you so much. All Happy right. holidays. Bye, Roman. Bye, -bye. Bye, Javier. Bye, Rodney. Later.